Howdy, 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 my name's Anasha Sasuke, and welcome back to Let's Read Homestuck. I put this off a little bit too long today, so when it gets posted, it's gonna be pushing the edge of midnight, probably. Yeah, yeah, probably pushing the edge of midnight. So, in the last episode, we left off with Carcat procrastinating a conversation with someone downstairs that grumbles after he dropped his Silidex on them, or whatever the hell it is they call those in uh, Alternia. So then... Not sure what the hell I'm looking at here. Oh! Why, who's this young lady? Enter name. Your name is Terezi Pyrope. You are pretty enthusiastic about dragons, but you have a particular aff affection for their colorful scales, which you gather and use to decorate your hive. Though you live alone deep in the woods, you surround yourself with a variety of plushy pals known as scale mates. Let's see now. You often spend days with them in rounds of live-action role-playing. You used to engage in various forms of more extreme role-playing with some of your other friends before you had an accident. You take an interest in justice, holding particular fascination for orchestrating the demise of the wicked. You have taken up study of brutal Alternian law and surround yourself with legal books. You have no need for copies printed in Troll Braille because you can smell and taste the words. You hope to one day join the honorable ranks of the Legislacerators. Your troll tag is Gallows Calibrator, and you speak with the numerals the Blind Prophets once used. You are presently the leader of the Red Team, poised to begin a mysterious game with five other friends in direct competition with another six of your friends, comprising the Blue Team. What will you do? Is this close enough to my face? No, okay, now it's on my face. It was probably close enough to my face. Cut to the chase and begin LARPing immediately. It's pretty hard to live-action roleplay when there's no one who is alive nearby, but all your scalemates are alive to you. At least you pretend to believe that to annoy people. To prepare a new campaign for one of your favorite scenarios, Court Block Drama, His Honorable Tyranny presides. On trial is an especially detestable fellow, Senator Lemon Snout. You have smarted with this scumbag before. Tonight, he faces justice. You will play the role of the prosecu prosecuting attorney. On Alternia, there is no such thing as a defense attorney or a defense. In a court block, the word defense itself is offensive. Uh, Terezi, interrogate. Most of the interrogation is in the intimidating silence. Slap him around a bit. Slap. Slap. You don't want to slap too hard, enough to sting but not to bruise. It must be methodical, businesslike, and persistent. You only stop when you smell tears. Mr. Senator, you smell very nice. Your luscious yellow scales are like the sweetest gumdrops to prosecution's nose. But your deceit stinks. Did you honestly think you could dip your corpulent snout in into the imperial beetle coffers like that and get away with it? Did you think your revolting abuse of the public trust would go unnoticed? Think again, good senator, while the prosecution may be blind. Rest assured, the League of Legislacerators sees all. So this, what this button does. Huh. Oh! Okay, yeah, I'm not gonna push any more of those. Right. Terezi, call a witness. Oh, well played, well played, Lemon Snout. Well played. The prosecution's key witness murdered! How convenient! The court block has little choice but to acknowledge your cunning. You have earned just a teensy sliver of your respect back. For now. But wait! Oh my, what have we here? The prosecution begs your pardon, dear senator, but you appear to have dropped something. A personal satchel, perhaps? Chock full of illicit, embezzled beetles? With which you have unmitigated cheek to waltz before to his tyranny, concealed beneath your ill-gotten finery? The prosecution requests a short recess from his honorable tyranny so that all law-abiding and mother-grub-fearing citizens may go outside and puke. Terezi sentenced the criminal. As the prosecutor, it is your job to reach a final verdict and sentence the reprehensible felon while his tyranny watches in silence and submits grim approval. But you, have, but you take pity on the mis miserable bureaucrat. You're feeling merciful. You will give him a fighting chance. You will flip a double-headed troll Kiger coin 
To decide his fate, you do this quite often when making important decisions. Kind of like Batman's nemesis Two-Face, or that guy from No Country from Old Men. It turns out there are lots of badasses out there flipping coins, but those are Earth things and you've never heard of them. It's safe to say you borrow this gimmick from one of the many, many troll things out there that's got hard-boiled dudes flipping coins for major stakes. You base the habit on whichever one smells the most badass. Flip the coin. The coin tumbles through the air. Lemon Snout is sweating bullets! A favorable flip, the senator exhales in relief. But what are you so happy about, Mr. Lemon Snout? He looks a bit confused. He quivers his lowly proboscis, proboscis toy at the coin. See? The coin has exonerated him. Coin? What coin? Surely you jest, Mr. Senator. The prosecution sees no coin. She's blind, remember? <laughs> Adjourn. Another triumph for justice. The court block is adjourned. You offer final salutations to his tyranny in the customary manner. Okay, that's not customary at all. You're just kind of weird. It's just that your red chalk is the most delicious chalk. You cannot get enough of it. Anyone who says there is a more delicious chalk out there simply reeks of deceit. You sure had to go to a lot of trouble to do that. Go get your cane. You take your walking cane, which you use as a weapon kind of like Earth Daredevil who you've never heard of. You will use it to wallop enemies when you enter the medium. Like this! Begin recruiting red team members. Your nose begins scouring the chump roll through the saliva smears on your monitor for potential teammates so you can start playing. Hmm. No, not her. Nope, not her either. Definitely not that guy. Okay, how about this girl? You like to roleplay with her sometimes via chat. You pretend you're a member of the mysterious and noble Dragoni did race while she does her own goofy thing. You don't have it in your heart to tell to tell her that chat RPing is meant facetiously, I meant I mean facetiously. Troll AC. Gallows Calibrator began trolling Arsenic Catnip. GC lands on your whelping stoop and wraps on your cave with her noble and elegant talon, and once with her mighty snout for good measure. AC saunters from her dark cave a, a little bit sleepy from the recent kill. Sleepy from the... Okay. AC uses one of her mouths to lick the fresh blood off her paws, and the other one to blow you a kiss! GC with a mighty whisk of her mighty tail plucks the kiss out of the air mightily. GC pockets the kiss in her enchanted rucksack for later to do something magical, like make goblin wishes come true. Yes! AC finds that to be most uh, admirable use of a kiss. She thinks that goblin wishes need to come true, just like any other kind of person's wishes. AC begs your pardon while she rips apart this tasty beast to prepare a meal for her cubs. GC eyes the beast hungrily and mightily. Uh-oh! GC eyes the cubs hungrily and mightily, especially mightily. Don't you dare! I mean, AC shouts, don't you dare! Indignantly. But it is too late! GC scoops up a plump cub with her glistening majestic tail and flies off magically. The innocent cub is crying and crying and crying! AC says, no, And looks a bit crestfallen. AC gets a clever idea to slake the mighty dragon's mighty hunger. Majestic dragon's mighty hunger. She prepares the lion's share of the slain armored collar bear for, for go or for GC. GC's magnificent curiosity has been perked. Is it a bull collar bear? Oops, she asked that. AC pauses for a moment and nods knowingly with a couple of smug grins on her face. She confirms it is indeed the bulliest of bears. Bully, bully, bully. GC instantly loses interest in the puny cub and drops it to the ground far below. But as it happens, the really cute cub lands in a bush safe and sound. Woo! GC's alarming and splendiferous girth settles over the succulent collar bear steak. When she finishes the savory red meat, she lifts her proud, wise head and opens her great big mouth and speaks the ancient tongue of a thousand wisdoms. She says, 
Hey, you wanna play a game with me? AC crinkles up her nose and prepares for a really unprecedented marathon of baffling feline obstinacy. Yeah, I think that's the word I wanted. Her dragon <laughs> suitor will make neither rhyme nor reason of her perplexing behavior for even an instant. No, no, that was a real question. Wanna play a game? Oh! <laughs> okay, I mean, if you mean a computer game, then yes, that sounds like fun. Okay, you can be on my team. Team? Who else is playing? I haven't decided yet. A whole bunch of us in two teams. Oh. Well, it does sound like it will be a lot of fun, but I think I should get permission first. Blah, that's so stupid. He's not the boss of you. I know, but still, I'm kind of scared of him, and I think perhaps it's best to just run it by him first so there isn't a kerfluffle or about it or anything. This is stupid. It's such a in such a terrible myriad of dumb ways. You shouldn't be afraid of anyone. You kill big animals with your bare hands. And in any case, he lives nowhere near you, so the whole thing is extra stupid. I know, but I don't think it'll be a big deal. I'll just mention it casually, and it'll be fine, I'm sure, and then we can play in just a little bit. Mm. Fine. In the meantime, I'll go round up some more people to play. Okay? Troll TC. Oh, jeez. Gallows Calibrator began trolling terminally capricious. Hey, games, you want to play games with games? Is mis 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 hey, that sounds like the motherfucking shit's pinched hits. You then proceed through the rest of this conversation we already read. No luck in getting this guy to play with you right now either. You guess that leaves. Oh no. Not Car Cat. You're only going to ask him as a last resort. You wonder what he wants. You will try to avoid mentioning the game. Hopefully he hasn't caught wind of it yet. Deal with Car Cat. Hey, guess what? Big news! Like, holy shit, stop the presses! This is a humongous deal sort of news. Blah, what is it? You're not the red team leader! That's me. I'm the leader. It's been decided. Of an official basis. Oh, okay, so I guess I'm supposed to have a, make a big stink about this and say, Whoa, well, I wouldn't be the leader! What? No. I mean, you can, but it won't do any good because I'm the leader and that's all there is to evacuate through your protein shoot on the matter. Well, it may surprise you to know that I don't give a crap who gets to be the leader because unlike you, I actually have a fucking smidgen of maturity and self-respect. That's a lie, you're m more of a melodrama spaz queen than me, and you know it! And this stuff is... This stuff you're saying is a pretend stunt. You're like a rocket-propelled spaz maggot spring-loaded up the ass of a psychedelic fucking freak-out weasel on idiot drugs, so let's not play make-believe games here. Leader, me. Ugh. Car Cat, I don't care! You can be the stupid leader, I just want to play this game. Okay, great. If it's any consolation, I have selected you to be my second-in-command. Really? Swoon. Fuck you, offer rescinded. Okay, but seriously, I would have suggested you be the leader, but honestly, it comes with serious responsibilities, and I wasn't sure if you were up to it. How could you think that? I'm an incredible leader with all kinds of prioritization and command skills. I would have rocked the cock off this weather vane, and the blue team will wish they never slithered out of their mother grub's heinous undulating asshole. So just give me the full briefing. What do, what do you know? Okay, the thing you need to know is the leader starts out by running the client application while I, the lowly second officer, connects to you with the server while I remain generally in all of your manly grandeur. And I sit at my computer doing menial chores in support of your heroic escapades, which honestly I don't think you're ready for, but whatever. See, this is what I'm talking about. This is what I was made for. Being in charge of adventure, running around and stuff, and fucking shit up like a goddamn hero with a rip, a ripper wasp in his chalk. Let's get cracking here. Launch your server or whatever. I'll install the hero program. The client. Yeah. Okay, if you insist. Far be it from me to stop you from being dashing and courageous. And to be perfectly honest, a little bit handsome. Yes, exactly. Oh, now you're making sense. This is the kind of thing that sane people say. Keep at it. There's hope for you yet. Okay, I'll try. Anything to get you to stop being such a baby. What's a baby? Oh, it's like a mythical little pink monkey? Something my lustest dreams about. I thought you didn't have one. I don't... yet. I'm not allowed to. Why not? Why have you never mentioned this anyway? Honestly, Terezi, it sounds like more frothing loony block nonsense. If I ever did have one, it would mean the world was coming to an end. Oh, thank god you just said something normal. I was starting to worry there. Woo, back in sane land. It's true! I don't completely understand it, but that's what it told me. We need to get you out of that fucking tree and into a proper goddamn lawn ring. 
You've been stunted living up there by the whispers of fucking bark gnomes or something. I think one of my neighbors was just cold recently. Maybe you could live there. No, screw lawn rings. More like yawn rings. I love my tree. But you're welcome to visit sometime. It's especially nice in the third autumn. Okay, well, speaking of that, I should go downstairs and deal with this grumpy customer. It's going to fondle major seed flap, but hopefully it'll be quick. You can establish your connection and do your trivial sidekick stuff, I guess, in the meantime. Okay, cell phone what? What do, what do you want, cell phone? Shut up. Shut up. Thank you. What the hell? What the hell is this? After the Night of Blood's heroic arrival to the land of Pulse and Haze, what? Wait. Wait. Ho wait. Okay, a little later. Okay. I did not miss anything. I just did that. You quickly crafted a new weapon! Home smell you later! Plus some other cool stuff. Deal with Terezi. Carcinogenesis Geneticist began trolling Gallo's Calibrator. You can see me, right? Tell me what is wrong with this picture. No, I can't see you, dumbass. Oh, yeah. Anyway, press your nose against your slobbery screen and tell me what is wrong with this picture. Smells pretty terrible. That's because you just took a hard drag of my load gaper, which is... For some reason, which for some reason I've discovered outside on this little island. You mean your toilet? Well, ooh la la! Excuse my disdain for your blue-blooded vernacular. What color is your blood? No, none of your business. Seriously, was that a serious question? Unbelievable. I'll find out someday. What is it with your obsession with colors? It's bad enough you waste all my hard on gris rambling my hive around like it's not even in the direction of the fucking gate. But then you go and spit it on an ugly paint job! I killed a lot of imps for that grist! Carcat, please. Don't pretend you didn't enjoy going around killing things, and that you wouldn't enjoy killing a whole lot more! Prancing around with your little sickle being all adorable. Yeah, right, more like, adora bloodthirsty. I'm prancing around being that, okay? Anyway, this is awful. This is no way for a leader to be treated. Sorry, this is what you wanted. The leader is the first to go in. The first one in. This is what the leader is supposed to do. No, this is not anything except for what bullshit is. A leader shouldn't be at the mercy of the hive renovation whimsy of a psychotic blind girl. When do I get the chance to fuck up someone's hive? I should be the next one to connect to a client. No, you can't. You have to be the last one to connect to complete the chain. More lies. Think of it this way. I'm your server player, so priority has to be on me getting in the game before I get killed by meteors. In which case, you'd be screwed in there. Then the next guy comes in, then the next, and you bring the last one in. Whoa, wait, what? Meteors? What the fuck are you talking about? Why does- what does this have to do with meteors? Oh boy, you need to get with the program, Carcat. Have you talked to AA? 44 what? Apocalypse a Apocalypse Arisen, sorry. No, of course not. Or, t or uh, T4, or 4G, I guess? Or C4? Really, there's like a whole conspiracy about this, as I'm finding out. Well, why don't you just tell me so I don't have to talk to any of those double-talking assholes? I can't! I gotta step out of the tree for a moment. When I come back, I'll enter the game. See ya! A little while ago. Yeah. I forgot how terrifying she used to look. Desecrate. You're not sure why you did that, really. There will probably turn out to be a reason. There's a reason for everything. Understanding this lets you be reckless, whoever you are. A little later. Somewhere else entirely. Hey, it's a little itty bitty crab dude! Rubbish from the land dwellers makes you sick, whoever you are. And later still. We return to the land of Pulse and Haze so we can rewind a bit. Before all that paint got slapped on your hive and before that mysterious hole was made. Man, how did that hole get made? It was when Carcat ran TA's cursed ATH program and his computer blew up. That's what happened. We'll see this later. It will be starting startling and unexpected. Carcat, deal with crabby customer. You go downstairs and confront your custodian, which is another term for frightening beast known as a Lussus Naturae. I don't know if I said that right. I've never had to say that out loud. Your Lussus has looked after you since you were very young in lieu of any biological parents whom you have never known. 
No young troll ever knows his or her blood parents, nor could such lineage ever be accurately traced. Adult trolls supply their genetic material to the filial pales, carried by imperial drones and offered to the monstrous mother grub, deep underground in the brooding caverns. She then combines all the genetic material into one diabolical incestuous slurry and lays hundreds of thousands of eggs at once. The, egg, the eggs hatch into young larval trolls which wriggle about to locate a cozy stalactite from which to spin their cocoons. After they pupate, the young troll with his or her newfound limbs undergoes a series of dangerous trials. If they survive, they are chosen by a member of the diverse and terrifying subterranean monster population native to it, Alternia. This creature becomes the troll's lusses, and together they surface and choose a location to build a hive. This building process is facilitated by a carpenter droids left on the planet to cater to the young. But only for building. They're on their own otherwise. The vast majority of adult trolls are off-planet, serving some role in, in the forces of ongoing Imperial conquests, besieging other star systems in the name of Alternian glory. The culture and civilization on the homeworld is maintained almost entirely by the young. Trolls sure are weird. I'm not sure if it's an actual flash. I think it's just pretending. You leap into the domestic fray in an attempt to mollify your nannying aggressor. After a lot of kicking and fussing and gnashing of teeth and care pass, you pull out a few chilled ro uh, row cubes from the fridge to settle the beast down. Trolls and their custodians have a peculiar arrangement of codependence. The lessons behaves as a lifelong bodyguard, a caretaker, and visceral sort of mentor, while the young troll must learn to function as a sort of zookeeper. We decide to agree this conflict is not a big enough deal to warrant a detailed examination of the action or an embedded musical accompaniment. We also agree that while it would have been pretty sweet, we are also in kind of a hurry here, but if it if were to be accompanied by something audible, it would probably sound something like this. We decide to listen to that track, close our eyes, and imagine what might have been. Wow, that sure was awesome. Anyway, moving on. Let's see what would have been. Interesting. Anyway, moving on. In fact, we are in such a hurry, you could almost say we need to get moving on the double. Yeah. There's this pretty cool dude, okay? Some people seem to think he's cool. Sometimes, he guesses they're right. I mean, maybe. If they say so. Actually, you know what? They're right. This guy's dynamite lit in a box of hot shit. Screw the haters. Anyway, he's standing around being all chill like cool dudes are known to do sometimes when they're not moping around or nursing migraines or whatever. A cool dude like this probably has a real cool name. Or at least a name that doesn't completely fucking suck. Like at least not the kind of name that belongs to someone you'd want to just perpetually wail on. Maybe just a name that makes you cringe a little, but... You guess you can deal with it if you got to. It's just a guy's name. It's not like it really matters. Who cares? But he probably wouldn't just tell you what it was if you asked. He'd be way too moody for that. In fact, this guy probably thinks you've got some attitude and probably doesn't want a damn thing to do with you. You could always try to guess his name. But instead of that, here's a better idea. Why don't you just fuck off and go to hell? Here, name this kooky broad instead. Okay, what's her name? Wait. You've gotta be kidding me, looks like we're going back to this other guy again. Alright, hang on. It appears this cool and moody dude has had a change of heart. He feels pretty bad about flying off the handle like that, as if shit wanted nothing to do with the handle. Shit would like to reconcile with the handle and perhaps seek marital counseling. So what's his name gonna be? Enter name. Your name is Solix Captor. You are apeshit bananas at computers and you know all the codes. All of them. You are un the unchallenged authority on apiculture networking. And though all your friends recognize your unparalleled achievements as totally sick hacker, you feel like you could be better. It's one of the number of things you sort of beat yourself up about for no very good reason during sporadic and debilitating bipolar mood swings. You have a penchant for a bif uh, bifurcation 
in logic and in life. Your mutant mind is hounded by the psychic screams of the Im imminently deceased. Your visions foretell of the planet's looming annihilation, and yet, unlike the typical sightless prophet of doom, you are gifted with vision twofold. For now. You have developed a new game, adapted by a code parsed from the runes and glyphs in an ancient underground temple. You believe this game to be the salvation of your race, though you are not sure how yet. To ensure success, you will distribute the game to two teams of friends, a red team and a blue team. You will lead the latter group. Your troll tag is Twin Armageddons, and you tend to speak with a bit of a lisp. What will you do? Well, it says that he's going to equip throwing stars to his star specimens, but we're actually going to end the episode here. So, in the next episode, we're going to be equipping some throwing stars to a spice specimens. Maybe. Let me save the game. Alright. So, this has been Anasha Sasuke. Thank you all for sticking around for episode 28 of Let's Read Homestuck, and I will see you guys next time.